Health Spotlight, presented by Community Health Network. Let's welcome on Wish TV medical expert, former U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams. Dr. Adams, we have to start with what is, cannot be ignored today and for many days going forward, the excessive heat. So we'll have this all week here in central Indiana. The National Weather Service actually lists extreme heat as the number one weather-related cause of death. What is your biggest concern about it being so hot for so many straight days? Well, well, you're right. Uh, advisory all through the week, um, heat index over 100. Uh, and I've got a couple of concerns, actually. One of my concerns is for people who are particularly vulnerable. So that's little babies, that's people who are elderly, people who have medical conditions, um, and our pets. We need to make sure we're looking out for all of those individuals because they can get dehydrated very, very quickly. Um, I, I'm also worried about the fact that it's not cooling off enough at night for people's bodies to come back down. So if you do not have air conditioning, please look out for your nearest cooling station. Uh, they're available in most communities around Indiana. You've got to bring that body temperature back down at night. Otherwise, it's going to continue to gradually build. Final thing I'm concerned about, and this is a simple one, but it's an important one. Uh, don't leave your child or anyone else in a car because it is so hot outside that it literally uh, can only take a matter of minutes before someone is in a deadly situation. A lot of safety tips, a lot of preventative measures, but how can we tell when something is truly wrong and not just that we're uncomfortable? What are the symptoms that we need to be watching for in ourselves and for our loved ones? Good question, Drew. And uh, you're talking about a heat exhaustion and heat stroke in terms of medical terminology. We start to pay attention to altered mental status. Someone's not talking right, they're disoriented. Um, they can have headaches or nausea and vomiting. Uh, one big sign is if you actually stop sweating because you no longer have any more fluid in your body. And of course, just feeling um, and, and ha having a temperature greater than 104 degrees, that's actually um, how we help define heat stroke. So remain indoors during hot weather, drink plenty of fluids, um, don't leave anyone in a parked car, as I mentioned. I keep uh, emphasizing that because that's where we see the most unfortunate deaths occurring. And wear loose-fitting, lightweight clothing if you're going to go outside. It certainly still happens, so it's worth repeating over and over. Okay, switching gears to talk about COVID, specifically about the report that there are two new strains of the virus right now. How concerned should we be about cases beginning to climb again? Well, um... I am starting to be concerned, as are other scientists. Um, we talked last week, Drew, you and I, about EG5. It's an offshoot of Omicron, and it's become the predominant case, uh, pre pre predominant strain. But right now, there's a new BA 2.86 that you're hearing a lot about in the news. And what's interesting about this is it's got over 30 different mutations in the spike protein. And this matters because the spike protein is how vaccines are designed to work and how our body recognizes um, foreign invaders so that it can fight off COVID when we see it. So we're worried that this has the potential to be extremely immune invasive. We don't know yet, both BA 2.6, 2.86 and uh, EG5 appear to be um, more easily spread, but not necessarily more severe. But scientists are, are, are concerned because the, the way Omicron um, came about last year, that's uh, got similarities to what we're seeing with BA 2.86 right now. If you're vulnerable in particular, take precautions. Think twice about going out in crowded areas because wastewater levels are high, um, hospitalizations are going up. Uh, it's spreading right now. We just want to make sure uh, we're doing all we can to protect ourselves if we're vulnerable uh, while we wait for the new, uh, new boosters to be available in September, October. Okay. Dr. Jerome Adams, always helpful to hear. Thank you for your insight.